Triple A games are extremely rare on iOS. To help, I've put together my own list of true triple A games, even if most are pretty old. This list is broken down into genres. Use the time codes to browse your favorite genre. Also, please follow the download links and prices of games in the video description. Our first genre is triple A survival horror, and there is only one of them right now. Alien Isolation is the best survival horror game out there, at least for me, and the fact that it even came to iOS is awesome. You are being hunted by a terrifying xenomorph alien on board a space station. Complete objectives while avoiding this monster and other dangerous android robots and panicked humans. In many ways, this is the best version of Alien Isolation due to Feral Interactive adding contrast adaptive sharpening. It means all the small signs and text is easier to read, sharper, and the shimmering, aliasing effects are gone. It also can play at 60 FPS on new devices, unlike only getting around 30 FPS on M1 Max because of OpenGL support. Next, what about FPS games on iOS. Some people might not consider this AAA for the sole reason of it being free and having mobile in the game's title, but for me it really fits into this video. It has heaps of content on offer, not locked behind paywalls, you can jump into classic multiplayer modes such as Frontline, Team Deathmatch and Search and Destroy. All the maps and weapons on offer are inspired by the legendary and original Black Ops and Modern Warfare series 2. Players can then find matches in the Battle Royale mode or the Zombies mode. Plus, it's made by Activision, who you would refer to as a AAA production house. Sure, the graphics aren't outstanding, they're not bad, it's on the level of a PS3 or Xbox 360 COD title, but it's really good that it has 60 FPS or 120 FPS support on iPad Pro and iPhone 13 Pro and controller support. It's honestly a more fun, complete COD experience than the recent console and PC versions, which is a weird sentence to say. Apex Legends Mobile is almost upon us. Respawn have gone on record saying, this is a free standalone experience like COD Mobile, so it has no crossplay with console. Right now, it's available in limited regional launch in select places, but the worldwide release isn't far off now. Of course, it's not going to be as complete as the PC or console version, but it's not really that far off. Play battle royale modes from World's Edge and King's Canyon, try out multiplayer modes from Team Deathmatch and Arenas. If you can't get any kills, you can also try out the firing range and go into ranked matches. The major major downside to this one is that it has no controller support right now, which is stupid. Objectively, these type of games just work better with a controller. While maybe not developed by a AAA developer, Gunfire Reborn fits on this list because it's the first paid premium high quality FPS game on iOS. It's also sold more than 2 million of sales on Steam. It's not out until the 15th of April, but I wanted to show it some love before it arrives so people can support more shooters on this level for mobile. It's an adventure level based shooter with rogue light and RPG elements. You can play solo or in the multiplayer mode with up to four players. It also has controller support. Race to your heart's content in these thrilling races on iOS. Originally released in 2014, the iOS version of Grid Autosport came to the App Store in 2017 and is actually the best version of the game. Feral Interactive have added an improved graphics, new touch control schemes, controller support with rumble vibration, and 60 FPS or 120 FPS gameplay on recent iPad Pros. The game is packed with content from a career mode, extra championships, custom cup, time trial, and quick race. It's the ultimate racing game on iOS, and it's weird that not much else has honestly come close to it since it released. There is also a free demo version of this game available on the App Store. Need for Speed Most Wanted is one of the most overlooked races on iOS. 
It gets overshadowed by the free game Need for Speed No Limits, but trust me, this one is much better. Its major downside is having no controller support, but it's a more paid premium experience with no ads. Outrun cops, outsmart rivals, and outdrive your friends. You also have a garage where you can buy and try out different cars. While it was released way back in 2012, EA continue to update it with new resolutions for the latest devices and it has an improved car damage system now. Honestly, I much preferred F1 2016 on the App Store, which was a paid premium experience like the PC and console version, but it has been delisted, so all we are left with is this one. F1 Mobile Racing is still pretty good though. EA recently updated this one with improved graphics and controller support during races, which is awesome. It's great to play with the controller. Go into Grand Prix events, enjoy real-time multiplayer, and develop and upgrade your own F1 car. In collaboration with Apple, Eden Games will soon be bringing their next racing game exclusively to Apple Arcade, Gear Club Stradale. These are the people that brought you the Gear Club series on PC, console and mobile, and F1 Mobile Racing. It's not on the graphical level of Grid Autosport or Racing Masters, but it's a huge step up from the devs' prior mobile games. It will have full controller support, up to six player multiplayer, competitions, you can manage your own club, and you can build and improve your own workshop. Our last racer is Racing Masters, which looks to have close to the visual and physics quality of Grid Autosport. As I said, nothing has come close to Grid since 2017, and this might scratch that itch. Being free definitely will come with its drawbacks, I'm sure. Yes, it's being developed by NetEase, a questionable dev at times. That being said, I'm super excited that the great Code Masters are collaborating on this too. The people that brought you the F1 games, Grid, Dirt, Project Cars, and so on. It's being made with Unreal Engine 4, and you can customize and drive hundreds of officially licensed luxury cars, you can complete on real racetracks and rise up the ranks. Apparently, it cost them hundreds of millions to make. It's coming sometime in 2022. Special thanks to Marv on YouTube for providing the gameplay here for Racing Masters from an earlier test flight build. This guy makes cool videos about iOS and PC gaming on his YouTube channel, so check him out if you're interested. There are not many AAA adventure games on iOS. In fact, I can only find one that is truly worth your time if you're referring to AAA. That is Life is Strange. While Before the Storm is also on the App Store, it hasn't been updated for new devices and lacks controller support, which this game now has. Life is Strange is a five-part episodic game that was set out to revolutionize story-based choice and consequence by allowing the player to rewind time and affect the past, present, and future. It mixes AAA and indie production value in terms of its graphics, but it was published to the App Store by Square Enix, so it fits here. All right, now let's look at the AAA action adventure games that you can play on iOS. iOS gamers can enjoy the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy bundle on the App Store, which is a cheaper option than buying all three games separately. We're talking about Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. All these games are super, super old, but they're still fantastic open world action adventure games. Rockstar will soon bring Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition to the App Store. This version will be powered by Unreal Engine 4. If you're not interested in the Definitive Edition because it might have bugs and whatnot, don't worry though because the original trilogy will remain on the App Store when the Definitive Edition drops. Don't forget that Rockstar's Bully Anniversary Edition is also in the App Store. While this version hasn't had the uh, mixed Definitive Edition treatment of the 
GTA, the trilogy on iOS. It has support for high resolution displays, enhanced graphics, improved lighting and textures and so on. It also is just a classic game where you get to play as a bully in a school and cause havoc. Warner Bros recently updated the classic Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga on iOS with new resolution support and controller support. Unlike most of the other Lego games on the App Store, this is the same game as the PC and console version, graphically and content-wise. It's one of my favourite games from my childhood too that explores all the Star Wars films from Episode 1 to Episode 6. All in silly Lego form too. You can try the game for free and then unlock the complete game via an in-app purchase or you can buy individual episodes that you're interested in. Get lost for hours, days or months in these AAA RPGs for iOS. Not only is this like the best RPG ever made by Larion Studios, it's also the most demanding iOS game released yet, requiring a device with 4GB of RAM and an A12 Bionic chip or later. Divinity Original Sin 2 is so demanding, in fact, that it is only available on iPad. It is supported on the 2018 to 2021 iPad Pro, the 2020 iPad Air, and the new 2021 iPad Mini. Divinity Original Sin 2 lets you create a hero from a flesh-eating elf, an imperial lizard, or an undead. Then you will go and try to save the world in a 100 plus hour story. Players will gather a party and develop deep relationships with your companions and engage in fun turn-based combat. Titan Quest has two versions on the App Store. The version you want is the Legendary Edition by Handy Games and THQ, which is the new 2021 port. Legendary Edition includes the base game and all DLCs at a cheaper price. It also has technical updates, controller support, keyboard shortcuts on iPad, an in-game FPS counter, and an Apple TV version. The playtime for this RPG isn't as big as some of the others, in this section with about 25 and a half hours. But I like how it has tactical real-time with pause combat with party-driven mechanics. This in some ways might make it more challenging in a good way than turn-based as you progress further into the game. Fantasian marks Mistwalkers and Hironobu Sakakaji's triumphant return to game development. This is an absolutely massive RPG on Apple Arcade. It's split into two chapters, with the first part taking 20 to 30 hours to complete, while the second adds an additional 40 to 60 hours of content. You'll follow Leo, who has lost his memory, go on a journey to recover his memory and meet new friends and engage in great turn-based combat. All the dioramas or locations were handmade and then 3D scanned into the game. Cool. It's also not commonly known that Fantasian supports 120 FPS on the latest iPad Pros too, and 60 FPS on everything else. You can get the two KOTOR RPGs in a nice bundle on the App Store. You can buy them separately, but you're saving quite a bit with this bundle. While both games are, are very old now, they are still considered the most popular Star Wars games. There is so much to do with customizable characters including Twi'leks, if that's how you pronounce them, droids and Wookiees. You can meet unique characters and creatures and you can go to cool planets. Spy Media have updated both games for modern devices with widescreen support high resolution, improved lighting and graphics, full controller support, 60 FPS gameplay, and recently 120 FPS gameplay on iPad Pro. Don't go into this thinking it's the third person action game The Witcher by CD Projekt Red. No, CD Projekt Red made Thronebreaker to be a single player campaign for Gwent The Witcher card game. Across the 28 plus hour main story, players will engage in choice driven quests, meet rich and multi dimensional characters, 
and you'll be thrust into the monster infested world of the Witcher. You can play a few hours of the game for free, then you can unlock the full game with an in-app purchase. This open world action RPG was originally released on Nintendo 3DS, but in late 2018, Monster Hunter Stories arrived on iOS. It also came to Apple Arcade in 2021. I would say this version is better than the 3DS one. It's cheaper, Capcom have added improved high resolution graphics, an improved user interface and a new auto save feature. It's a huge game too, with a 37 plus main story. It just sucks, sucks big time, that it has no controller support for either the App Store version or the Apple Arcade version. Neverwinter Nights is a classic 2002 Dungeons and Dragons RPG, enhanced for iOS. Explore 100 plus hours of gameplay, including the original campaign, plus six free DLC adventures. Despite its age, it holds up graphically quite well in 2022. It's also the closest thing to Baldur's Gate on iOS. Yes, Baldur's Gate is on iOS, the, the first uh, two games, I think, but those games haven't been updated in years for the latest iPhone and iPad displays. We're still looking at RPGs, but these ones are, are a little bit more revolved around uh, combat in a sense. I, I don't know where to put these games, I just put them here. While Pascal's Wager doesn't have the graphics or fluid gameplay of the Dark Souls series, it has a number of advanced features on iOS. We're talking 120 FPS support on iPhone 13 Pro and iPad Pro, full controller support, and it was the first game on iPad to have full keyboard and mouse support. Giant Games and Tipworks were also backed by Apple at the 2019 Apple Special Event. Uh, they were using this game as an example of what's possible with the Metal API on iPhone and iPad. It also has 20 or more hours of action RPG content in the main story, and it has four playable characters with different combat modes and skill trees. Trials of Mana is a 3D remake of the hit classic ARPG released in uh, uh, 1995, I believe. It's the same game uh, as you'd see on, on console. It's just missing controller support, which sucks. Come on, why? Uh, sorry, when you start the game, you can select three of the six characters to play as. The cool thing is that the characters' stories can overlap with one another, depending on who you choose as your main character and companions. The story is all about good versus evil. Uh, yeah, it's not a spectacular story, but it should keep you engaged throughout the game's 21-hour main story. Let's look at some mobile gacha games with uh, no major pay to win elements. Genshin Impact is one of the most popular free gacha games ever released. Maybe the most popular. The use of its anime graphics, which is similar to Breath of the Wild, definitely works well and the open world feels alive with heaps of foes to encounter and other characters to talk to and help. One thing that it has going for it, unlike any of the other gacha games on this list or on the App Store really, is having full controller support. Yippee! And 120 FPS support on iPad Pro and iPhone 13 Pro. Although it doesn't really get 120 on iPhone 13 Pro, but it's there. Seven Nights 2 is the best looking gacha game that I know of with late PS4 or Xbox One grade visuals. Much of this is because it's powered by Unreal Engine 4 and supports the Molten VK framework on iOS. It's more linear than Genjin Impact or other gacha games, but I don't mind this as it has a more engaging story and combat sequences. And honestly, better uh, dialogue and, and voice acting. You can switch characters on the fly, collect and upgrade your heroes, and face different enemies from strong and ghastly bosses to an army of evil dogs or, or goblins or, or orcs. 
What's not better than playing as your favorite Marvel superheroes in an open world? Marvel Future Revolution is another game powered by Unreal Engine 4, and it has 120 FPS support on iPad Pro. Explore a massive and immersive open world. Enjoy various interactions with other heroes across various MMO regions and play alongside others in an original, fully realized Marvel universe. Blades had a bad start in terms of being very pay to win. However, Bethesda have fixed most of the issues and it's much more friendly now. It's their take on the mobile version of the Elder Scrolls. It's not as good, but it's, it's okay. Go on quests, create and customize a city, and go into online arena battles. It's quite slow and a little repetitive, so go into it with that in mind. In Dragon Raja, you can be whoever you want and play however you'd like to. You can go on a fishing contest, enjoy some parkour, hang out with friends, or delve into the story filled with quests and different dialogue options. Honestly, I don't know how to explain this game. Before Genshin Impact, MiHoYo, if that's how you say this developer, brought you Honkai Impact 3. While its art style is similar to Genshin Impact, it's a very different game. Players control a team of up to three characters in real-time combat against various enemies. And that's all I'm going to say. Are there any AAA sports games on iOS? Well, kind of. Your first option is NBA 2K22 Arcade Edition, which is available exclusively on Apple Arcade. Jump into modes from Quick Match, My Career, The Association, Blacktop, and multiplayer between other Apple devices. It's missing key features from the PC and console version, but it doesn't have any pay to win elements like the prior games in the series, or even the PC and console version in some ways. Plus it has full controller support. I doubt many of you will be interested in NBA 2K21 Arcade Edition, as you can just play the newer entry with the latest player rosters, but it's still available on Apple Arcade and I thought I'd just include it here for the heck of it. NBA 2K Mobile is the free version of NBA on the App Store. That means it comes with some questionable free-to-play elements. But what it's got going for it is uh, better graphics and 120 FPS support on iPad Pro and iPhone 13 Pro and controller support with rumble vibration. I, 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 I can't stand these football manager games. They are just not for me, but it's technically AAA as it's published by Sega and it usually has a big production behind it. If you're interested, it's available on the App Store and I'll leave it at that. Turn on your thinking caps with these high quality strategy games. Again, I can't, I can't stand this game. It's just, I just can't. But don't get me wrong. I know it, it, it's a good turn-based four by game, strategy game. Um, the, the main issue that it's got going for it is that it only runs at 20 to 30 FPS on, on iPhone and iPad, and it's running at a lower resolution. It's pretty cool that Aspire managed to get this massive game to iOS in terms of its complexity and the touch UI is very comfortable on iPhone which is bonkers and it even has keyboard support on iPad which is cool and it has cross-platform cloud saves with PC. Company of Heroes is RTS at its best. In many ways I think this game shines on touchscreens as you can feel closer to the battle by having the ability to respond to situations quicker by tapping on screen if that makes sense. Feral Interactive have added a new command wheel, which will be more familiar to mobile players, or a command panel, which will be more familiar to desktop RTS players. Furthermore, on iPad, the game has full mouse and keyboard support. The uh, cinematics are now in high resolution and gameplay, 
on Apple devices and included with the iOS port is the main campaign which lasts for 19 hours and some iconic DLCs via in-app purchases from Tales of Valor and Opposing Fronts. Farrell also said multiplayer will be coming to the game in 2022. XCOM 2 is my favorite turn-based strategy game on iOS. The mobile version of this high-end game is excellent with great performance, well thought out touch controls that even work great on iPhone, plus on iPad it has full mouse and keyboard support. XCOM 2 features a blockbuster story about bringing down the alien regime. The cutscenes and voice acting here are mwah, beautiful and the graphical effects look awesome. Included is War of the Chosen and four DLC packs in a single package with no in-app purchases. I suggest getting the Rome Total War Collection bundle on the App Store, which includes Rome Total War, Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, and Rome Total War Alexander for a cheaper price. This collection brings epic tactics and massive battles to iOS. Feral have translated these huge, huge strategy games brilliantly for iPad. Feral Interactive have shown up a lot in this video and for good reason, they port great games to iOS, just like Mac, in particular on iOS strategy games. In spring 2022, they will bring us Medieval 2 Total War, command battles with thousands of on-screen units and master the art of war using intuitive touchscreen controls. Outmaneuver your rivals on the campaign map with a redesigned user interface that puts the might of empires at your fingertips and the fate of the nations in the palm of your hand. I am beyond excited to try this one out soon. Our last genre is simulation. Mudrunner is the ultimate off-road simulation experience for iOS players by Focus Home Interactive. Across 15 open worlds to explore, you will use different vehicles and try to overcome the elements and master the realistic physics. Recently, the game also got controller support, which massively helps with the driving. Farming Simulator 20 allows players to look after a farm. You can harvest crops, tend to animals, manage productions, take on seasonal challenges. Giant Software updated the visuals significantly from prior games in the series. It's not on par with the console or PC version, but it's closer. It also contains a first person mode where you can walk around and explore the farm and full controller support now too. As the freshly elected leader of an underdeveloped Caribbean island with untapped resources and enormous potential, hopes are high that you will deliver Tropico into the glorious future its people deserve. The opportunities are boundless here in this humorous city builder with a political twist. Thank you, Feral. Uh, again for your hard work on bringing so many AAA games to iOS. What do you think of this list of AAA games on iOS? I spent quite a few weeks on this video. It, it was very time consuming, but I enjoyed myself and that's, that's all that matters in the end. Uh, I think I'm happy with what I've chosen here, even if there are too many RPGs on the list and really there are hardly any modern AAA games on mobile or games that many would actually consider AAA. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything, uh, please, because I, I spent weeks searching, and if I missed something, I'd be very annoyed. Anyway, I've been talking for so long, my voice is really dry and sore and tired, so I'll leave it there, but leave a like and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Stewie, and thanks for watching. I'm gonna go and have a a very nice uh, fresh glass of cold water for my tired voice.